there. Okay, come down. Released in March of 1992, Electronic Arts published a little game known as Desert Strike, which went on to be another of EA's milking franchises. But let's not get into that and concentrate on the game that started the entire Strike series. The game was inspired by the Gulf War, as if nobody could tell, even back then, and depicts the conflict between an insane Middle Eastern dictator, General Kilbaba, and the United States. You are on the US side and take control of an Apache helicopter in an attempt to destroy enemy weapons, installations, rescue hostages and capture enemy personnel, while managing supplies of fuel and ammunition. Levels consist of several missions. The Apache is armed with a machine gun, powerful hydro rockets and deadly hellfire missiles. The more powerful the weapon, the fewer can be carried so the player must choose an appropriate weapon for each situation. Enemy weapons range from soldiers with small guns to anti-aircraft missiles to tanks with armoured cars. After the success of the Mega Drive version, work began on the first port which came to the Amiga. The developers retouched and redrew the graphics and added additional sound effects taken from military training videos, which was cool. What wasn't cool were the controls when using the joystick. The directions are handled the same as the Mega Drive, but now when you hold down the button to fire, you can't turn the helicopter, because it also engages the strafe mode. Switching weapons is done by hitting space on the keyboard. There are also mouse and keyboard options to control the helicopter, which work a bit better, but neither are as good as the original. Controls aside, the game is quite reasonable in looks and sound. You can run out the screen at times, which is funny, but besides that, it is a reasonable port. Next up is the MS-DOS version, which is very much like the Amiga version, but now with faster gameplay and more colours on screen. In fact, using the keyboard controls, this is quite a nice version. It's just a shame I was having issues with the audio. Either I'd get the Roland sound canvas, holding the last played notes from the intro screen, or no sound at all during gameplay. Oh well. Of course the Super Nintendo got a port too, but now with an even worse version of the already crappy title theme from the Mega Drive game. I remember reading in Me Machines how great the music from Rob Hubbard was. Being a fan of Technosoft music, I thought this had to sound amazing due to how much the magazine was raving about the audio. The disappointment was high when I heard it, and even higher when hearing the SNES interpretation. Thankfully the game is much better than I expected. Yes, it slows down, but so does the Mega Drive version, so we can't complain too much.
Master System port is surprisingly competent. At a quick glance you may actually mistake it for the Mega Drive version, but notice it isn't because this one is programmed well, with no slowdown. Ooh, and that's going to upset some true Desert Strike fanboys. Oh well. Actually this Master System port is a lot easier than the original in a few ways, but mostly in that the buildings and enemies take less hits in most cases. Controls are a little odd as the Master System only has two buttons. So one button is the gun and button two is the missiles. Buttons one and two together are the third missile. So yeah, a little odd but still better than the Amiga's one button controls. Now you would expect the Game Gear port to be the same as the Master System, but no. This was developed by our favourite numnuts, Tier Text, instead of the more talented Kremlin who handled the Master System version. As a result this port is based more on the Mega Drive original when it comes to the intro, which is a good thing, but sadly, the good points end there. For the start, you can clearly see how much more jerky this is. Then there's the graphics. Many sprites are unrecognisable, some even look as if they've been cut off. And the perspective is crazy, some of the tents are smaller than the people. Then we have how it plays, not good. Picking up things is a pain, aiming at anything is a chore and the gun seems to lock on to whatever it wants. We can always rely on tier text to f*** up a game. Next up is the Atari Lynx version. Now take into consideration that the Lynx has a rather pathetic resolution of 160 by 102 pixels, while the Game Gear is 160 by 144 pixels. This should look much worse than the Game Gear version in terms of detail, but I'm sure you will agree, despite the pretty barren floor, this looks rather good. And get this, it plays reasonably well too. It's just a shame the introduction isn't present in this Lynx version. The Game Boy version is very much like the Game Gear version, but now with better designed perspective. Sadly the playability is just the same. 
This was distributed by Ocean, so that is a bad sign. However, I'm not sure who the developer is, as it isn't mentioned on the game. Most likely Ocean farmed this out to Tear Text. The final troop port that isn't just emulation of a previous version was released on the Game Boy Advance. This is Desert Strike Advanced. What's so advanced about it, you may wonder? Well, it's basically the Super Nintendo version now running with a more cropped screen, lower fidelity sound and less buttons. So uh, yeah, that is very advanced. And let's take a look at all those versions of Desert Strike running side by side. Okay, I got a target right there. Oh. 